Hello my friends, I'm back to 2004 and for absolutely no reasons under the sun, I've decided to test a Pentium 4 versus an AMD Sempron. What can possibly go wrong? This is the socket 478 Pentium 4 with the mighty Northwood core clocked at 2.8 GHz with 800 MHz frontside bus, 512 level 2 cache and hyper threading, which is a semi dual core before we got proper dual cores. People are throwing away this Pentium 4 today, but 20 years ago this was a real deal, the business. And the budget every geek should have it Sempron. Clocked at 1.92 GHz with 256 KB of level 2 cache, half of the Pentium 4, 333 MHz FSB, half of the Pentium 4 and the price point of around $100, uh, half of the Pentium 4. It has the Thornton core and can be used together with socket A motherboards. But Geek, you're showing us an Atlanx PCPU. How can you stoop that low? Uh, yeah, not my fault. These CPUs are identical. Athlon, Sempron, just look at this. Can you please tell me which is the Athlon XP and which is the Sempron? Even this motherboard recognizes this Sempron as being an Athlon XP 2400 plus. Don't worry, I'm using a real Sempron 2800 plus CPU during tests. There you go. The boards that will main these CPUs, a little cheeky joke for you about main boards, you're welcome, are two VIA based motherboards. For the Pentium 4 we have an Asus P4V800X, a motherboard that has the VIA PT800 chipset. PT because it's a pity not to use an Intel chipset for an Intel CPU, but here we are, we PT the fool that brought us a Pentium 4 motherboard without dual channel memory support, uh, yikes, it makes me vomit through my ears. But this might be a good thing because on the other side of the spectrum we have this socket A motherboard, Albatron KX600S, a MOBO with a forgettable VIA KT600 chipset, no dual channel for the memory, I'll be using an AGP GeForce 7600GS video card in order to avoid bottlenecks, but afterwards I'll be also using these two video cards right here, I really want to spice things a little bit, just for the funsies. Also, in order to make sure that the components are well cooled, I'm using this fast Titan cooler for the Sempron CPU, copper core, 9000 RPMs and an amazing 100% copper Zalman flower cooler that does not have brackets, but I found a way, as always. And the Sight Ninja 2 for cooling the 7600GS using my proprietary technique, because Asus were not capable of creating a good passive cooler. Well, they had the capability. Look at this passive cooler for the Radeon X1600 XT, it's amazing. No one's favorite, Super P finishes the job faster on the Sempron. So if you're ever been curious about how a gazillion digits look like, Sempron is there for you. PCMAR 2002, to quote the developers, provides consumers and business users with a unified benchmarking tool that reliably measures and compares performance of laptops, desktop PCs and workstations across multiple Windows operating systems. Yes, please measure my performance across. And the Pentium 4 is the better laptop CPU, 18% better, here is the conclusive proof. Also because the motherboard can use memory at 400 MHz compared to whatever megahertz for the Sempron, the memory score is also way higher, almost double. In Sys of Sandra, the Pentium 4 is better in CPU arithmetics, but not by much, up to 10%. But way better in CPU multimedia tests, especially floating calculations, 55%. I wonder how many of the 2000 synthetic benchmarks were rigged. That's why I have some real tests around here. Installing 3DMAR 2001 SE was faster on the Sempron, by around 4 seconds. Far Cry GOG version was also installed faster on the Sempron, but only by 15 seconds, from a total of 11 minutes. GOG games have quite a hefty install time, that's for sure. And finally, installing Warcraft 3 from the CD was the same on both platforms, around 7 minutes. A very important thing to mention is the CPU usage. Usually the Sempron stays at 100% when installing stuff, while the Pentium 4 at 50% because it has hyper threading. And this is a big deal, it means that you can use the Pentium 4 computer while installing stuff, multitasking is a thing here. The Sempron won't be able to do so much extra stuff, it's already capped at 100%, 
and those of you that remember the early 2000s know that it's very hard to use the PC while the CPU is at 100%. Compressing the 3 dmar 2001 folder was faster on the Pentium 4, and here also the Sempron stays at 10% all the time, while the Pentium 4 flat 50%, nice. If I would be to give a rough description about AMD versus Intel in the early 2000s, I would say this, AMD had the better price per performance ratio, while Intel had the better performance overall, better stability and better features, such as hyper-threading and newer SSC instructions, which were used to run newer apps, for example newer Fraps versions won't run on the Sempron because it does not have SSC 2. In 3 dmar 99 we have a close battle, only a 5% difference. 3 dmar 2001 SE sees the biggest jump in performance, 15% in favor of the Pentium 4. In 3 dmar 3 we have a 9% difference. But gaming was the real apple of discord between geeks in the 2000s. We had all kind of CPUs, it was free for all. So let's begin the tournament with Unreal, the first, uh, 99. And here the Pentium 4 is around 20% faster, for all resolutions and settings. The interesting part here is that we have the same FPS in all tests. This means that both CPUs are bottlenecking the video card, right? Well, the video card is not that good for this game, but we're going to see this later on. 20% difference between CPUs is huge, but both of them have stellar performance, obviously. Around 100 FPS is very good for this game. The only things remaining in order to have an amazing experience are some good peripherals, a good display and a good ping if you're playing online. Quake 3 was always favorable towards Pentium, and there are no exceptions here. The Pentium 4 is a hefty 30% faster than the Sempron. Well, it's 80% more expensive, but about this later. Please, let me get through the tests, ok? Thank you. So, each CPU has the same results at 800x600 and 1024x768, which is a trend for this video. In Jedi Outcast we have similar conclusions. And considering that it's built on the Quake 3 engine, it's not surprising. The Pentium 4 is 40% faster at 640x480 and 20% faster in REST. Nice job! But let's move to a more demanding game, Mafia, which seems to be having 30 FPS all the time, no matter the specs. The engine of this game is LS3D, it was developed by Illusion Softworks, the developers that created Mafia. And in terms of visuals is amazing. But in terms of performance is weird, it has small stutters even on way more powerful systems. And the drawing distance is simply abysmal, although you can install a patch in order to address the drawing distance issue. I did some driving on the same path several times and I've recorded the FPS with fraps. And as you can see, the Pentium 4 is again faster, this time by around 16% for average and 13% for 1% lows. Testing some loading screen capabilities, both CPUs load Halo Combat Evolved in 13 seconds. Well done guys! Halo is an amazing game to play and test, because it has an in-game benchmark, so all results are going to be very precise. Again, the CPUs can provide enough power for the video card. As you can see, similar results across all resolutions and settings. Still, the Pentium 4 is an average 30% faster, reaching over 60 FPS at 1024x768 high settings. Mind you, Halo is an intensive shader game, supporting the amazing pixel shader version 2.1. Another shader intensive game, a game that can cut the ground from under more powerful CPUs, Underground 1 was released in 2003 and looks amazing, but can run pretty bad. And although 30 FPS is not awful, I'm using a video card from 2006 here. The Pentium 4 is 10% faster on average and the hefty 23% for 1% lows, which is very important as 22 FPS makes the game feel slow and laggy, you might lose the race because of it. The FPS was again recorded with fraps, and I did multiple runs with the same car on the same circuit. Far Cry loads way faster on the Pentium 4, by about 10 seconds, a 70% difference, amazing! Far Cry was always known for its huge loading times, get a Pentium 4 and you're set, time is money. I could not test Far Cry on the Sempron system, I had some visual glitches, so I have here only 640x480 minimum comparisons. And yeah, the Pentium 4 is way faster, with a 40% difference, quite cool. The further in time we go with gaming, the newer the game, the bigger the performance gap between the CPUs, 
and this reinforces again that the Pentium 4 was a more future-proof CPU. Sure, AMD had their win with the lower Atron XP models in the Pentium 4 Willamette era, but once Nortwood started to kick in, Intel regained the performance crown and stayed there until the Atron 64's release. But was AMD the price per performance champion that we all know it was? Well, looking at the dollars per FPS chart, yes, the Sempron had way better results. The Pentium 4 should have been $50 cheaper to have the same price per performance as the Sempron. But what about the prices? This chart is using the 2004 prices of both CPUs. In 2004, the Sempron had a price of $100 and this Pentium 4 $180. Is this relevant? Well, what is relevant anyways? Let's say that it's 2004, you have an older computer and you need to upgrade, but you already have all of these nice parts, awesome case, powerful power supply, hard drive, optical drive, RAM, you only need a motherboard, CPU and video card, but you only have $350. What should you buy? You can go with an Intel platform. You can choose a $100 via PT800 motherboard, this 180 Pentium 4 2.8 and an $80 video card, the amazing Radeon 9250 with 128 bit memory bus. If you go AMD, you can have a $100 via KT600 motherboard, this $100 Sempron 2800 Plus, and a powerful 150 Radeon 9600 XT. But what is the performance difference that we're going to have between these equal priced computers? Let's find out. Uh, I'm not going to show 3D my results, this is just for show off. But what I will show again is Unreal Tournament. I simply love retro hardware and games. Only here you can have 133 FPS with a Radeon 9250 and 103 FPS with a GeForce 7600 GS. Have a look at the first tests. Surprisingly, the Pentium 4 is still faster, even when using a clearly inferior video card. What about that? The Pentium 4 plus the Radeon 9250 is 20% faster than the Sempron plus 9600 XT. Amazing! I've repeated the tests to be sure, and yeah, these are the results, in-game benchmarks don't lie. And this is not an accident, the fact that the 7600GS is slower than the Radeons can be seen in Quake 3 also. Here we can see that again the Pentium 4 has the upper hand, but when using 1024x768 high settings, the Radeon 9600 XT comes from behind and wins the battle for the Sempron. The Sempron heavily bottlenecks the Radeon 9600 XT while the Pentium 4 is able to make the most out of the Radio 9250. Jedi Outcast is another weird fellow. The Pentium 4 is faster, 60% at the lowest settings, but the Sempron plus the Radio 9600 XT have better performance at higher resolutions and quality. Why? Halo Combat Evolved is a next-gen game, and here we can clearly see the differences between the video cards, double the performance at 800x600 and 1024x768, that's more like it. Also the Pentium 4 can play Halo at decent frame rate on these resolutions with this video card, 23 and 14 FPS is awful. Keep in mind, these systems have the same price. Far Cry is the last game for tonight and I've managed to run all tests with the Radeons. At 640x480, the Pentium 4 system is faster, at 800x600 the systems are on equal footing, and at 1024x768, the Sempron system gets in front by almost 50%. Now, that's a hefty performance difference. Seeing all of this, I finally realized something. I finally came to grips with reality, and I finally saw the light. Hot take of the week. Socket A Sempron was useless in 2004, but the Pentium 4 Northwood was still quite decent. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, don't use Sempron CPUs, that is, if you want to have fun and be nostalgic.